A Skype interview with SpaceX founder Elon Musk on your space pod for August 10th, 2010. On this space pod, we've got an awesome interview with Elon Musk. Now we're doing this over Skype, so please forgive us if we get a few audio dropouts. And if you want to see the full interview, you can do that by signing into your Space Vidcast Epic account or signing up for access. And I did want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know you're extremely busy. You've got a slew of different companies that you work with. And going back to the beginning, um, well, a little bit after the beginning, after uh, X.com and PayPal, um, you founded three companies, or at least founded and funded three companies, SpaceX, which does rockets, uh, Tesla Motors for cars, and then you also did Solar City, which is uh, photovoltaics. Why those three companies? Uh, sure. Well, um, it really just goes back to when I was, when I was in college. I, I wanted to be involved in things that I thought would really have an impact on the world. And um, the, the three arenas that I thought would have the biggest impact on the future of humanity were uh, the, the Internet, uh, moving to sustainable energy economy and uh, space exploration, in particular becoming a multi-planet species. So um, I, I did a couple of internet companies that gave me the capital to work on sustainable energy and space exploration. And that's what really the impetus behind creating those companies. Tell us a little bit about the future. The, a little bit of information has been leaking out about, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce this correctly, is it Falcon X or Falcon 10? Is that considered Roman numerals or an X? Um, well, I, I think it, it uh, <laughs> um, probably Falcon X, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I, I think a lot of it was just really taken out of context. There was, you know, one, one of our, um, uh, uh, one of the engineering directors at SpaceX was at a propulsion conference, tossed out some ideas. But those are not official SpaceX policy or plans or anything, they're just ideas for discussion. Um, and then some articles were written that basically made it sound as though that was some sort of official SpaceX plan or policy or what SpaceX was proposing. Um, you know, I think um, it's a slow news day or something in space uh, because it should be possible for SpaceX, um, you know, uh, engineering managers to go to a conference and talk about ideas. Um, getting too carried away, um, but they did. <laughs> so so I, I, I would not read anything into it. That, those are just some ideas for, for discussion. Well, you know, uh, the, the good thing about that is, it, it, one, one interesting takeaway is that if the U.S. government were to say something like that, we'd all kind of scoff and go, yeah, well, maybe. But when SpaceX comes up and says, you know, here's a potential future, we all kind of at this point believe it. We, it you're kind of uh, a company that we all look at and go, yeah, if anyone could do it, it's them. And uh, along those same lines, that's where a lot of the um, old space advocates, or we'll call them established space advocates, uh, when, when we pointed at the Falcon 9 Flight 1 launch, they, they were l waiting for that to explode in the air or anything for it to go wrong so they could slam down the proposed fiscal year 2011 plan. Sure. And then even when you were successful, they still found ways to slam it down. Why are they pointing at SpaceX as the only company for that? Because you're not the only company under the COTS program, but why are they targeting SpaceX? Um, well, I, I think the reality is that there's, um, SpaceX is, is sort of the only, is the, the only threat to the incumbent uh, big, big aerospace companies that, that they've seen in their careers ever. Um, you know, you'd have to go back to kind of the early days of of airplanes or something. You know, to when Lockheed and Boeing were, were first getting formed, to to really say, okay, that's when they had a serious threat. Um, because it's been this sort of cozy op oligopoly for quite a long time. Or in the launch business, there was a duopoly. You know, with <laughs> Boeing had their launch vehicles and Lockheed had had their. Um, so. Um, you know, it's really just a situation of um, that they're they're attacking the only threat that they that that they've ever seen. Uh, do you believe that Mars by 2025 is possible? And if so, where would funding from that come from? Yeah, I think it's it's important to be precise in the language. I I I hope that people land on Mars by 2025. Um, you know, SpaceX will aspire to. May ha help make that happen. Uh, you know, we, 
if, if there's any way SpaceX can, can make that happen, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen if it's within our power uh, to, to influence that, that objective, we will do so. Um, but, but I want to distinguish that from it being predictive of it occurring. I'm not saying that it will occur. I'm just saying that we're, we will try to, to make it happen. And I think it's possible that it could happen. Uh, another question from the Twitterverse was, um, what about the Falcon 1E? It seems like we've got a lot of momentum in um, uh, time going into the Falcon 9, uh, but what about the Falcon 1? Well, we are upgrading the Falcon 1. That'll launch sometime, you know, hopefully uh, next year. Um, the, uh, the Falcon um, 1E, or, you know, essentially version 2 of the Falcon 1, will... Um, Make use of of, uh, of an upgraded Merlin engine. Um, so we have a Merlin one that's an improved version of Merlin one C, um, and and that's the engine that will be the main engine for Falcon, the upgraded Falcon one. Um, so you know we we want to get that that engine development done before we um, uh, do the rest of the upgrades of, of Falcon one. Uh, but there's no question we're going to get it done. Um, and uh, I would expect first flight perhaps um, you know, late next year or something like that. Um, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, like I said, I, I know you need to go, but I did want to thank you for your time. Hopefully you won't be a stranger to the show. I'd love to bring you on live sometime so we can get the, uh, the Internet and Twitterverse, as it were, to ask their questions directly of you because you are a fascinating mind and you're doing stuff that uh, uh, is, frankly, without sounding too cheesy, going to forever change humanity, and it's, it's really fun to watch. Well, thanks. I, I, certainly, I certainly hope it has a, a profound long-term effect. i um, happy to come on your show ag again in the future. Um, I do think it's important to sort of rally the people uh, to the cause of, of commercial space because, I mean, I really feel like this is a situation where, um, like, the, you know, the, the, the big companies that, that have, you know, billions of dollars and, and just armies of lobbyists and, and PR firms and everything, um, they can really sort of overwhelm the truth in a situation like this. And I think that's, that's happened, actually. Because um, it's just crazy that, you know, that we're, we're fight, fighting over a tiny, a tiny NASA portion of the NASA budget, budget for commercial space. You know, we're trying to get $300 million for commercial space out of 20.5%. Um, and, and, and yet the sort of the dark forces are doing everything they can to shut that off and just... Basically, they're just hoping to starve commercial space to death. Um, that that's their goal, um, and it's it's sort of a pretty evil goal. Um, and I think what, you know one of the ways that we can fight that is is by you know people calling their their congressman and and senator and that kind of thing, and and uh, just kind of uh, going out there and speaking up in favor of, of commercial space flight because that's the only chance that anyone has of of, of normal people going to space. Um, Otherwise, it's always going to be just a small number of, uh, of, of astronauts, you know, at ex extremely expensive cost, going to make a low future. Well, no, and absolutely. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's actually a great note to, to end this on. Thank you very much for joining us, Elon. And, and please keep this conversation going. Don't, don't just talk about this. On, in the comments on the website and on YouTube and whatnot. So keep it going on Twitter. Keep it going on Facebook. W do it in the water cool. Do it in person. Talk about this with your family and friends. Get space in the forefront of the consciousness of humanity again. It was there when we were on the moon and then it kind of vanished because, you know, it st started to stagnate. Well, no longer. Now we're starting to do some really cool things. Start talking about it. And as you start talking about it, you'll find that the consciousness, the global consciousness, becomes more and more educated. And I think that's very, very important getting people excited and engaged about human spaceflight again. And if you want to continue this in person, you can do so at the upcoming Space Up Conference in Washington, D.C.